Okay, let's uh, get started. We talked about how to pray for our family members. Now we will look at how we can pray for those who have gone away from God. It also will involve some spiritual warfare. Okay, reason is, you know, there is not just that person's will which is involved, but we know that there are demonic influences that keep, that keep people away from God. So in our situation, we're talking about our family members. We know that Satan and his demons work very hard to keep them blind to the things of God. So while we are saying, Lord, you know, we declare this and we declare that over their lives, we also have to take authority. Remember, we said we have been given dominion and authority that was given when you know adam was put in charge of the world he he lost it but it was restored through the cross of jesus christ so now you and i based on the cross of jesus we can go against demonic spirits okay that is called as spiritual warfare so that's another additional dimension of prayer uh, which is spiritual warfare. One thing we must understand, in Isaiah 49 and verse 25, it says, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. You see, there is a promise in God's word which says that even in simple terms, what this passage is saying, if you say that your children are now prisoners, God is a God who can remove them from that prison. Now, Satan may keep them as prisoners, um, you know, prisoners of bad habits, bad thoughts, bad company, destructive behavior, destructive lifestyle. So all these things may have captured them. But based on what God is saying, he's saying, I will, you know, bring them out. Uh, even if, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, meaning I have the strength to bring them out of that strong prison of whatever, you know, um, bad things. And I will save your children. So we have to fight for the children. I gave you that example of Steve Hill, one, um, you know, famous preacher. There are, you know, several other examples, but uh, I'll share one more example later on. But before that, a little bit about spiritual warfare. So how do we do this? You see, the Bible says that Satan, he blinds the eyes of people. So there is what we call as a spiritual veil. They're not able to see the truth of God's word. Now, we may be speaking about Jesus to them, but... Because they are blind, this is in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4 and 6. It will be useful if somebody reads it. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4 and 6, please. Mike is here. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 and verse 6. The God of, his, of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel the, uh, that dis displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves. But Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts uh, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in, in the face of Christ. Okay, wonderful. So you notice there 
that the god of this age okay, it's a small god with the small letter g referring to satan so the god of this world is satan he has blinded the eyes of the people and verse 6 you know it says you know let god's light shine so the blindness should be removed off of the eyes of those who don't know jesus so here are a couple of things one is we will fight with the demons and their influences second is we will invite the work of god you know the work of the holy spirit the presence of god the word of god to work in their lives so in spiritual warfare both these things we will do so how do we fight with you know demons and demonic influences we have to bind and cast down the spirits okay, there could be spirits what kind of spirits exist there are spirits of deception okay that speak lies into people's minds there are there are spirits of atheism they just try to convince people yeah there is no god no there are spirits of uh, in many other philosophies humanism extension existentialism uh, all kinds of false teachings philosophies people believe in these things so when we try to share let's say a child at home uh, a young person far away from god we are trying to tell them see this is what the bible says they say no i don't believe in all this i believe in you know you should live life to the fullest you should live let live you know they have their own philosophy and you're wondering i'm telling them so much about the love of jesus i'm sharing testimonies i'm sharing scriptures how come they're not understanding you know we also have to when i say fight it's not you literally fight with the person it's a spiritual fight where in prayer we take authority and we bind remember jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be lose in heaven so there are times in prayer where you just can't say heavenly father i ask no you are no longer asking you are just taking authority you are saying in the name of jesus i bind those spirits of atheism you know or whatever because it could go from i'm not and again i'm not saying that you know every time they say oh there is no god i'm not saying it's a spirit behind it no but at some point we can sense that it has gone from a place of logic to a place of constantly depending on a certain philosophy at that point you know there's a spirit involved right so unless you deal with that spirit you can sing songs you can talk to them you can do counseling you can do whatever you want it may not work you have to deal with the demonic spirit okay so which is why you take authority you bind and you cast out that spirit in jesus name so in prayer you might have to do it once a couple of times till you see a release from that spirit then you also can fight against thoughts imaginations reasonings arguments you know uh, the bible says in second corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5 that there are some of these things thoughts of the mind which exalt themselves above the knowledge of god so if there's anything that goes against the knowledge of god that passage says you need to pull them down right so when we are praying for our loved ones who are away from god we take authority and we pull down those strongholds and we say no if i uproot that stronghold in the name of jesus which is causing confusion in the mind of you know whoever that is your, uh, your loved one and then you begin to pray for them and please note that you know we are not talking about mind control we are not talking about controlling people's will we can only stay in the realm or the boundaries of exercising our authority even after you do all this is it the person's decision yes we cannot control people through prayer okay but we can use our maximum influence through a through prayer and use our authority so that is spiritual warfare we have to fight for our loved ones and bind those demonic strongholds uh, you know thoughts and all of that then we begin to uh, ask god to come and start working in their lives so there are passages of scripture where uh, you know we read that the holy spirit brings conviction of sin righteousness and judgment so we can pray and 
you know ask holy spirit you work you help them understand what is sin what is right they not able to tell the difference you convict them that you know this is not okay so you begin to invite god to work upon their hearts um jesus said that you know uh, when i'm lifted up i will draw all men you know unto myself so you can also pray prayers like god jesus you draw this person to yourself okay so and you can pray sometimes people say um, you know that passage matthew 9 laborers send forth laborers the harvest is plentiful we can also pray and say lord a uh, god of the harvest you send people in their lives maybe there is nobody in their life to influence them in a positive way maybe the child is living far away in some university or in another place but you can say lord you send godly people let them sow the fear of god in their hearts let them sow the word you know prayers like that you invite the work of god uh, upon them then of course you can pray all the other declarations you know which we've been talking about pray for them to be spiritually strong fulfill god's purpose for their lives and all of that so when we start doing things like this we will sooner or later see the results so i told you i will share about one more testimony and it's there in our notes this is about um, franklin graham son of billy graham so billy graham had five children uh, out of the five apparently two of them uh, went away from god in their growing years and um, it wasn't easy because uh, you know that too Uh, billy graham being such a famous preacher and his own children uh, not trusting in god and being disobedient so his wife okay she prayed for her son and she also wrote a book it is called prodigals and those who love them it was written by ruth graham and uh, you know she talks about how uh, she lovingly prayed for her son who wandered away from god and not only did that bring her son back but in that time she also grew in god okay so it's it's about her and uh, by god's grace her son franklin graham who was far away from god you know he came back to the lord at age 22 after a period of rebellion um, and traveling the world but you know god touched his life once again so he has written a book that's called his autobiography which is called rebel with a cause he okay, rebel with a cause franklin graham uh, it seems he was so rebellious that they put him in a christian school and the school threw him out and said we don't want such a student take him out so you can imagine situation was really bad but god once again touched his life when he was 22 years old and now you know he is the president and ceo of billy graham evangelistic association okay so he heads up uh, the ministry uh, and he is also uh, in charge of an organization known as samaritans purse okay which is a relief organization um, and uh, other great things about franklin graham is he has met at least when this these notes were put down at least five us presidents um and he has also met leaders world leaders in europe africa asia latin america and he's gone around preaching everywhere preached to at least 8.1 million people around the world so you see the story changed isn't it but somebody was praying for him somebody was battling for him and that is what is important we can't just give up you know on people who have gone away gone away from god i wanted to say something else but uh, yeah just okay anyway if i remember it later i'll i share with you so that's about you know oh yeah so uh, franklin graham also a uh, says in that in that book no rebel with the cause he made a statement he understood that um uh, being the son of billy graham will not take me into heaven you know because uh, 
God does not have grandchildren. He has sons and daughters only. So just because his father was a great preacher doesn't mean that he will be automatically born again, right? So that he understood. And then he made his own personal commitment to God. So beautiful stories of uh, people and, uh, you know, at the time when they're rebellious, I don't think it's beautiful, but yeah, thank God that he can turn anybody's story around. So uh, at the bottom of this, this uh, lesson or chapter, we have promises to declare over our home. So far, we talked about people. Now, home. So what are some nice passages that we can take and declare? Maybe right now we don't have a home, but you can speak it right into the future. So Psalm 118, verse 15, it says, Rejoicing, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Maybe right now there's fighting and confusion. But you still say, no, God, your word says the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. And the right hand of the Lord shall do valiantly. Then I'm going to skip Psalm 128 because we, we looked at it. Uh, we will read Psalm Proverbs 3.33. It says, he blesses the home of the just. So when I say, God, I want you to bless my home. It's a valid prayer because it but says, no, he will bless the home of the just. Then, based on Proverbs 12, 7, the house of the righteous will stand. The house of the righteous will stand. So, you know, we take all these verses and we say it. People may say, oh, no, this house will not stand. This family will not make it. But who said, is the word of... Somebody else more valuable or the word of God more valuable? You hold on to the word and you say, God, whatever they say, let them say. But your word says, the house of the righteous will stand. I declare my house will stand. You know, no matter what happens, my house will stand. Then you continue to make declarations after declarations over your house. Uh, Proverbs 14, 11, tent of the upright will flourish. So you would say, my home will flourish. We will do well. We will be successful. We will uh, you know, rise up and be salt and light. So you make those declarations because God has promised that the tent of the upright will flourish. We will flourish. Proverbs 15 verse 6. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. Okay. So what is wrong? If it's there in the scripture, we'll say it. You no, know, doesn't sound very humble, but you know the Bible says in the house of the righteous there there is much treasure. It can mean spiritual treasure. It can mean you know earthly goods. It's all fine. We claim it. And we say, Lord, in my home there will be much treasure. You will give precious things, whatever we need. So, you know, say that. And the next one, I really like this um, passage, and I pray this a lot from my home. Isaiah 32, verses 18 and 19, it says, My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwelling places, and in quiet resting places. Though hail comes down on the forest, and the city is brought low in humiliation. So what does it mean? It basically means that no matter what is happening in the city, there could be calamity, destruction in the city, but God says, my home will be a peaceful place. My home will be a secure place. My home will be a safe place. Okay? So you speak that. You declare it and say, God, thank you. Your word says, and I believe it. What kind of a home do I have? I have a peaceful home. I have a secure home. I have a safe home. You begin to um, fight with those those scriptures, and you will see, uh, you know, God making your home such a place. And at the end, the last part of this chapter, there are additional declarations for children, 
so you know you can go over them so i'll quickly read you know just the the key part of these verses so from psalm 37 uh verse 20 yeah 25 26 uh it says i am old now i have lived a long time but i have never seen good people abandoned by the lord or their children begging for food at all times they give freely and lend to others and their children are a blessing so basically you pick the parts for the children my children will not beg for food you know they will have enough they will have abundance my children will lend freely to others my children are a blessing okay so that's how you take it and you begin to apply it so um later it says a good man's children will be powerful in the land his descendants will be blessed so you can say that for yourself um the next passage from 120 uh, psalm 127 verse 3 it says behold children are a heritage from the lord the fruit of the womb is a reward that means children are a joyful thing they are a blessing you no know? some parents may think oh children are a headache no but the bible says children are a blessing so we will declare that children are a blessing then psalm 818 it says uh you know my children we are for signs and wonders in israel so parents can make that declaration we are for signs and wonders okay so much of revelation is there in scripture isaiah 44 verse 3 and four basically here god says i will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring so you take that and you say it lord thank you you will pour out your spirit on my not just my children but my children's children you will pour out your blessing on my children my children's children so it gives a lot of hope as you pray you know these passages through based on what god is saying yeah so i think i'll just uh, uh stop with that oh yeah another beautiful thing is isaiah 54 and verse 13 it says all your children shall be taught by the lord and great shall be the peace of your children so today in the world there are a lot of influences if you send a child to school they'll come back and they'll be telling you so many things you're like where did you learn all this who is teaching you all these wrong things right good things and bad things but you declare over them isaiah 54 verse 13 my children will be taught of the lord meaning they will be sensitive to the voice of god they'll be very sensitive not just the world but the voice of the lord they will be taught of the lord and great shall be their peace so you can declare it and also i know some of us are thinking here oh it's too far away marriage children why am i you know wasting my energy on this now but you can declare it into your future even if you don't have children now you can speak that over them into the future right uh, and as i told us it's an investment the prayer declarations are an investment okay so this is how we pray for our family any thoughts any comments yes anand your hand is going up uh, you know very high So I wonder what you're going to ask me. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Hmm. We consider a family, yeah. a pastor family. Okay. Okay. The son, the son wanted to do ministry. Okay. But in but in a different way, like uh, he wants to do something and hmm. do ministry, like uh, in in. <laughs> hmm. Okay. He want to do a job, and also he want to do. <laughs> What happened? Okay, okay, no problem. Ask the question. That's okay. No problem. No problem. Yeah, go ahead, Anand. I'm I'm not telling you about this, but. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. he wants to do a job, and hmm. he he also want to do a ministry. Okay. But the, their parents are praying for. for the full time ministry mm-hmm. so can parents pray like that okay 
okay yeah actually uh, so i'm not, I'm not huh. telling about this one only i just gave an example that's it mm. in any situation in any context yeah sure so see parents can pray whatever they think is you know god's prompting to them so we can't stop them no from praying what they want to pray but at the end of the day the son or the daughter the child cannot be forced so if the son wants to do it in a different way he'll have to learn how to communicate it in a polite way to his parents and do what god is calling him to do okay there'll be little tension okay that you can't avoid it uh, but just because parents are praying it doesn't mean that um you know uh, the son has to do exactly what the parents are praying for him yeah okay so, see free will is applicable anand free will is applicable yes yes prince hmm yeah but what if uh, the parents were praying what god has called him for to do like if parents were praying about uh, what god called him mm -hmm. then what to do like like okay no 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 go ahead you explain yourself you said parents are praying that the child has to do yeah see what i'm saying is there can be only one will right either the parents are correct or the son is correct my assumption here is that parents are thinking in a traditional way okay that may be they don't know exactly they they don't have the space for new thought with that in mind they are only praying what they know okay full time ministry is the only way to serve god okay but assuming that the son knows what god is calling him to do i am saying he'll have to step out and do what god is calling him to do yeah okay see even if the parents are praying what is correct okay what did we say we said that uh, when we pray for in spiritual warfare we will invite holy spirit right holy spirit um, what was that passage john 16 verses 7 through 11 where the holy spirit will convict people he will tell them what is sin what is righteousness what is judgment so whose work is it to tell us you know right from wrong in our holy spirit so parents cannot be holy spirit no you get what i'm saying sometimes what happens we try to influence by just telling telling no you have to you have to we can't do the job of the holy spirit even if they know what is the will of god they can only pray got it and you yeah they cannot force and if it is really god's will then it will come to pass no if they are praying so yeah see nowhere in what we are sharing can we force we can only pray we can declare but will of the person is very much uh, yeah it, it is that is that a wrong uh, for praying for children to be in a ministry like uh, uh, we we can see in, in normally mm -hmm. pastors used to pray for their children to be like them only in ministry yeah is that a wrong thing from parents or they wanted to be their sons only in ministry the in some churches they don't want to uh, give chances to uh, some some other people they only yeah. want to focus their children and their Correct. grandchildren is yeah. that wrong see um for us to desire that our children will serve the lord it's a good thing right all of us desire that that our children should serve god they should become great so we desire that but even when god is saying something different getting stuck on that and you know what you're saying like a like a how you have maybe a family 
many people have right family they will only be engaged in a certain kind of a career or a business or, but ministry is not like that no we have to go as per god's calling on people's lives so maybe you know maybe the father is this mighty preacher and everything but the son might be more of a media person now if you push the son and say no you have to preach you have to do crusades he may not have the grace to do it so it's very frustrating right so that's why i'm saying that praying desiring is still okay god will not say oh it's wrong what you're praying god also knows it's coming from good heart that this parent is asking my son should be in the ministry he should take over my ministry but you see god will also lead no he will say okay no you allow him to do something else or uh, maybe there is another person in your congregation or you know in some other ministry who will join you they will lead so one should be open to what god wants to do yeah yes mm -hmm. Okay, so what Anand is saying, there are many ministries in which we can see family members, children. See, in every family, we can't even say that the children are not called, right? It's possible that the children are also called. So that way, like we, the the point is, whomever God has called should be appointed and made to lead, uh, whether they are from the home or not from the home. Now, if they don't have the capacity, and then we are forcing them, uh, then it won't really work out. I'm, I remember this one thing that I heard about uh, John Osteen, right? John Osteen, Joel Osteen. So uh, apparently, John Osteen, he was this very fiery preacher, you know, like he was part of the Word of Faith movement and all that. So he used to preach. But when he was going to, um, like, you know, stop preaching, strangely, like, his son, like Joel Austin, was media, media guy. He used to only, you know, record his father. That's all he knew, like how to record. Okay, dad, speak like this, speak like that, don't move. That was his only job. But when he was going to stop preaching, suddenly his parents told him, you're going to preach. And he was shocked. He's like, I don't know how to preach. I'm only behind the scenes. But, you know, today, one of the things is his ministry, right? It's known worldwide. Why? Because... I'm not promoting anybody's ministry. I don't know much about Joel Austin, by the way. Anyway, all I'm saying is his skill of media, he used it, utilized it, right? So I don't know much about his preaching, the content of his sermons and all, but I know his name because he still knows how to make use of the knowledge, you know, media and videography and live stream you know, how to do it well. So you see how it's worked out in a different way. Okay. One of his brothers, he's a doctor. He doesn't even, once in a while, he will come and share some things from the pulpit. So my point is, some of the family members may have some sort of grace and God may, you know, lead them to take the ministry forward and grow it. But some other family members may not have it. So we should not be stuck, is all my point. So in some ministries, yes, there are sons, daughters, brothers, and sisters. That's okay, no? If they have the grace, so we can't judge, can't judge them. Sure. Okay. Yes, one hand. Mm hmm. Yeah, you can't force. So Vimal is uh, saying that a pastor is thinking his whole generation will serve the Lord, but he can't force the children. Yeah, he can't. Oh, 
Okay. See, again, it depends on how they will serve. If the, if the person is thinking they will only serve by preaching or pulpit ministry, they may be disappointed. But if they have a desire and they are declaring my whole, uh, you know, all my children, my descendants will serve the Lord, they may serve in any way. No. God is faithful. If you have prayed that prayer, God is faithful. Just that it may not be the way you think. We think, ha, huh, they should be pastor, they should be preacher. Everybody, how everybody will become preacher means you think. Full family, all generation. Not possible, no? Yeah. Okay, good questions. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, uh, before we talking to Prince about uh, you know some parents you know might be you know in a traditional way you know not like accepting new ideas, but what you know we're talking about is it traditional, right? Because we see in the Bible itself that Paul used to work and used to uh, do his ministry. So isn't something new that we are seeing right now? No. Uh, so working and serving God is not new, but somewhere I think it's just a mindset where. We, we look at full-time ministry a little more, you know, with reverence as compared to maybe, uh, you know, working and serving God. But it's just a mindset. The Bible doesn't say yeah. one is better than the other. See, most important is what is God calling you to do? Because you have to give account for what he's telling you to do. Whether that is marketplace, whether that is full-time, you know, you have to seek God and you have to... Uh, you know, uh, come to a conclusion. Yeah, yeah. because like I for one like uh, want to do, uh, you know, I want to work and I want to preach. Yeah, you know? sure. So um, the reason why is that um, I don't I don't want to become like uh, when I have a family, I don't want to become burden to them, you know, mm. just to go full time ministry, you know, not to uh, provide them with their needs and necessities and all. So I want to work and I, I want to preach something. I want to do that. That's my reason. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sounds yeah. good. And uh, yeah. another thing I wanted to ask you is that when it comes to like ministry to media, like I don't, I mean, I for I for one, I don't think so is that effective. Like when you see like Paul Denikran like preaching through a TV and you're watching through your living room, I know maybe some people might you know honestly like look through the Bible and do it, but other people might just think of it as like a TV show or something. Mm -hmm. But when you're at church, it's like a completely different setting. The mode is set. Like you know you're in a church, you you know that the pastor is there and you're a presence of God. So that's okay. one of my questions. Okay. So um, in this case, uh, Sean and moreover, like we don't want to let down any, you know, ministry or any man or woman of God. Um, but then it's a, the context is different. So what you stated, they're not running a church, right? It's a crusade. It's a program. Now, if something like that comes, um, you know, uh, through TV or online, that's okay. But that is not going to replace physical church community. Like local church is a completely different thing. And you will study in your second year. You have this course called as the House of God. What is the meaning of the local church? Right. So yes, in that sense, you are right. Media cannot and should not replace physical like in-person relationships and church community. Because in the Bible, the church is known as house of God, house of God where God lives. Okay, So God lives among his people. If you don't have community, how will God you know, live among the people? Yeah. Yes. You know, your class is one class in which I'm like, how am I going to finish the portions? But it's all good. You're learning something. So you have to pray for me. Okay. I have to finish the portions. Yeah, Anand, go ahead. I think, ma'am, actually, about uh, Sean, uh, yeah. asked, but even Jesus and Paul also worked actually for the livelihood. Mm. So, uh, in these days, uh, pastors used to think uh, when when we call for a ministry, full time ministry, uh, when when they get any struggles, any uh, finances issues, they don't used to uh, they don't uh, get an idea to work in any way. 
this act like uh, uh, god will provide me god but god gave us education and things uh, we know everything we know some things to do to work for us and to uh, make a food for us so uh, is it wrong i mean pastors used to sit in the houses only they used to tell like god will give me god will give is that correct or we also can work yeah so uh, see anand i think we can work okay so s- somewhere we have that mindset where we think okay god will provide means that i don't do anything and i just wait but you know that that may not be um, i do agree that sometimes you know and this is rare maybe sometimes to show his glory god might lead us in that way but majority of the times right we can use our common sense we can use our skills right we can use um, everything that god has given us to to ensure that um you know we we work things out in a proper way we can also save isn't it saving so many things are there you will study about all that when we do our course on house of god practical things very practical things about dealing with money how can you know uh, people of god leaders manage money right for the ministry um trusting god so many things are there so my short answer is yes you can work there's no problem okay um i'll just look at the chat here uh while well, yeah i i saw just one second there's a there's a question here something that broke my heart recently my friend who is a believer lost her young son to suicide she was praying for him sincerely and uh, even family prayer even family prayer over zoom regularly now the family is completely shattered now this grief has made them question many things how should i pray for this beloved family she also has another teen daughter okay so jashin is asking this question uh, a friend whose daughter uh commit sorry young son committed suicide so jashin you can pray for the comfort of the holy spirit you know we read about the holy spirit as a comforter as a counselor so you can pray for that and you can also pray and ask god now that you know there is another child uh, a teen daughter you can uh, okay in addition to that you can pray for healing of their hearts because what has happened is quite a you know painful um situation in the family so then their hearts also need to be healed right so you can pray for healing for their hearts and uh, you can begin to pray some of those prayers which we shared for the children for that teenage daughter okay so yeah so i i hope that helps um yeah as we do that we can trust that you know god will begin to minister to this particular family okay and very sorry to hear uh, what has happened if you don't mind you can share the name uh, of okay it doesn't matter we can just keep in prayer okay we'll we'll pray for this family all right uh, prince you wanted to say something Hmm. okay so uh it's okay to work okay and uh depending on how god calls you some people are called to full time ministry so if that's the case then you step out god will surely provide okay uh but what is your question sorry i got lost
okay so <clears throat> this is the scenario of somebody who uh, who knows they are called for full time ministry but they are doing work and ministry also but they regret that they gave that time uh, you know they divided their time between work and no no it's not wrong and see if one realizes that at some point in their life they have to stop then it's okay you trust god to redeem that's all right he can if you're willing to um you know go 100% with him yeah so don't live in regrets okay sure next yeah uh, so when you like uh, you look at uh, prince's question ma'am it you, you should also think about whether that person had a family that he had to he or she had to support or not I mean, if he did have that, if he did have a family that he or she should support, and he worked and did ministry, I felt it was well spent. He worked, he provided for his family, and he did the Lord's, and he or she did the Lord's work. So yeah. that's that's a good thing to look at. But um, another terms, you can also see that he also supported himself. Mm. You know, by not relying on other people, but relying on himself, and you know, and his faith in God. Yes. And one more thing I wanted to add is that, um, like. Uh, relating to Anand's uh, question, like you know, how pastors like uh, they believe and trust in God, so and they like that God will provide everything to them. So I have an example. So uh, this is about a pastor who used to um, uh, who used to take the train every day and go to various places to uh, preach. So he'll anyway he'll get up in the morning. He'll go to the uh, near, near the train station, and when you know that uh, counter where you have to like pass through and you have to take a ticket. So Right about when he's like going to pass through, some other person will come in and like uh, like pay for him, and then he'll go through like that. And then the same thing when he needs like food or something, like someone will come and provide him food in the train, you know, for free. And then like after you know finish his ministry, there they you know provide him something, and then he comes back here. You know, he, he won't he won't have money to even travel also, but since somehow you uh, God will pro, uh, provide him is the thing. But if you look at the example, he didn't like sit at home and wait all those things to come to him. He started to go and just depend on God. It is more like you know, um, like going to the. It's more like being at the edge of a cliff rather, like what he was doing. So yeah. that's that's one example, like how you can have complete faith on God and just keep going on your way. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's very encouraging yeah. to know that someone is moving with the Lord and uh, the provision is also coming in. One more question, is it? Okay, it's all time up. To say, ask the question fast. I'll answer fast. Next class, sure. Don't forget it. Okay, fine. All right. So we'll uh, close off now. And uh, Jashin has shared, you know, the details of um, his friend's daughter. Uh, okay, so I have her name. All right. So we'll we'll pray during our uh, supernatural hour. Jashin. Okay, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. I want to request someone to, Sean, why don't you? Heavenly Father, thank you very much for gathering us all here for Nancy Rams class, Heavenly Father. And thank you very much for helping us have good discussion here, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you for giving us such a good understanding of one lesson, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you for really revealing us new things to Nancy Rams, Heavenly Father. And uh, please bless her, any Father, guide her, any Father, and please lead us all mighty and more of a class, any Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a week. We shall meet again next week.